Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a for each loop in a data factory that will get data from a SQL Server database and will load it in different files in a blob storage. So first, in our data factory resource, we are going to connect to the AdventureWorks database and we are going to get a list of all departments. Once that's done, we are going to loop through each of the departments and we are going to load the employees data of each of them into different blob storage files. We already have a data factory resource and a blob storage container created for this project. We are going to get into the data factory resource, into author and monitor, and in the manage area. And in the linked services, we can see that I have already created a linked service to the database and a linked service to the blob storage. So we are going to start a new pipeline. We are going to call it employees by department export. And we are going to start working on it. The first thing that we need is a lookup activity in which we are going to get all the list of the departments. We are going to call it get departments. And in the settings area, we need to identify a data set. We don't have one created yet, so we are going to create a new one. We need to look for the Azure SQL database. We are going to call it department names. We are going to choose the SQL linked service that we previously saw. And we are going to keep the table name empty and the import schema option as none. Then click OK. The dataset is already there and we can also see it in the dataset area. To continue configuring our lookup activity, we are going to choose the query option and we are going to switch to the management studio where we have already a query that we are going to run. It's going to fetch the full list of department names that we are going to use. We are going to copy it and paste it in the query area in our activity. We can now do a preview of the data and we will realize that only one row is coming. Why? Well, if we scroll down, we can see that there is an option checked to just get the first row. If we uncheck it and do again the preview, now we will see the whole list of departments. Ok, this activity is completed. Now we need to add a new one. We need to go to the iteration area and look for the forage activity. We are going to drag it to the work area and we are going to connect them. We are going to call it forage department and we are going to the settings area. In the item area, we should click in the add dynamic content option. And there is a really cool thing here. If we scroll down, we have an area where we can get to other activities outputs. So here we have the lookup activity output and we are going to click on it and the expression will be copied. This is not exactly what we need, but for the moment, let's skip this. We are going to click in the symbol inside the activity box and now we are inside the forest loop as we can see here. We are going to drag here a copy activity. On it, we need to define the source. In the dataset, we are going to select the same as in the lookup, given that it's the same SQL database, and we are going to choose the option query. Let's go back again to the management studio, and we have here a query running against the DIM employee table, which contains a work loss. We are going to paste it into the data factory. Of course, we will need to parameterize it later, but let's continue with this. In the sync area, we will need to create a new dataset pointing to the blob storage. So we are going to look for the right type. Now we need to choose the format to be used. In our case, we want a CSV export. We are going to call it CSV export and we are going to choose the right linked service for it. In the file path, we are going to look for our destination path, folder departments, and we are going to keep the name empty for the moment. We are going to check the first row as header option because we want to keep the headers on the CSVs. Ok, for now, we have a whole process that has a lot of queries and variables hard coded. We are going to debug it now. 
Here we can see that the first task ran successfully, but the for each loop crashed. If we click on this icon, we can get some more details about the error. It's expecting an array and it's not receiving it. The answer for this is in the lookup output. If we open it, we can see a JSON format script containing the amount of rows in first place and an array containing all the departments that we want. This array is the one that we need to pass to the for each loop, so we need to specify the value array. Let's go back to the for each settings and we need to add to the output the array name, that in this case is going to be value. So adding it this way should solve the issue. Let's go to our copy activity and in the source we are going to click in the query area and we are going to click now in the add dynamic content option. What we need here is to concatenate the script and add at the end the variable that contains the value that we need. If we don't know how to do this, we can scroll down and look for the functions. In this case, string function and the first one is the concatenation. We will click on it and it will be added. We are going to paste inside simple quotes the script. We will use double quote as escape character for the SQL string. Comma. Let's prepare the ending quote. And here in this position, we should add the variable. To look for it, let's scroll down and we should choose the one inside the forage area. As you can see, we have a new item here, but imagine that we are fetching more than one column from the database. We need to define the column name. So if we go to the preview data option of the get departments activity, we can see that the column name is department name. So that's what we are going to add to the definition. Now everything should be ready to iterate by department. The only missing part is to complete the destination dataset configuration to write each department into a different file. For that, we need to go to our CSV export dataset and we need to create here a parameter that we are going to call file name. Now, in the connection area, if we click on the file area, we will see an option to add dynamic content. We are going to click on it and on the window, we need to choose the recently created parameter file name. Ok, now let's go back to our copy date activity, to the sync area, and we have here now an option that was not here before. We can give a value to our new parameter. We are going to add a dynamic parameter, and it should be the department name followed by the extension. So we are going to add a concatenation, and inside the for each variable that we already used, followed by the department name and in the second part of the concatenation, the file extension, .csv. It's done. Now it's time for testing. We are going to run again the debug process. And as you can see, everything finished fine. A lookup task has been executed, a for each task, and as many copy activities as department we have. If we browse to the destination container, we should see as many CSV files as departments. Here they are. Okay, so this is the end for this video. I hope you found the content useful. Thanks for watching.